In this video, I'll be reviewing the latest episode of The Flash, which is Season 9, Episode 3, titled Rogues of War, and give you guys my thoughts. Before we get to that, however, I didn't make an episode about The Flash Season 9, Episode 2, so I thought I'd talk about here for a minute before getting to Episode 3 this week's episode. This episode, titled Hear No Evil, was awful. They basically killed Caitlyn off screen and nobody cared. The whole thing about choosing which Caitlyn gets to remain and the fact that it's up to the members of Team Flash and just like those four people is a bit ridiculous. Like, you don't think Caitlyn's mother should get a vote? Maybe Cisco? Why is a former serial killer's vote as important to this decision as somebody like Barry? It's insane and ridiculous. And Caitlyn's whole identity crisis that's been going on since season 3 hasn't been interesting since season 3 and remains something that simply exists on this show. It was nice to see Pied Piper again, but I thought he was far too much of an asshole in that episode, even compared to the next one. And of course, there's all the typical complaints like Cecile, Allegra, and Chester. I gotta be honest, I just did not want to talk about this episode last week because I had nothing good to say about it at all, and it just would have been another video where I'm 100% negative about the Flash. So I'll give it a 3 and let's move on to this week's episode which was honestly much better. This episode is titled Rogues of War and it honestly wasn't all that bad. For one, Cecile was barely in the episode, she didn't do anything and I think she had maybe one line, so that's major points in favor of this episode. On the other hand, Allegra and Chester were in this episode and continued their will they won't they that's been going on for what feels like years now, which does automatically drop points off the episode. You can skip every single Chester and Allegra scene that's been about their relationship for basically since it started, and you literally wouldn't miss anything important about this show. In fact, the viewing experience would only be enhanced. Also, all the scenes with Chester and Allegro have Keon in them, a character who also kind of brings down the quality of these episodes because her existence is ridiculous. They killed off a character who's been around since the very beginning in the final season in exchange for yet a new version of that character. It's ridiculous. And while that is more of a complaint for episode two, I also just don't like her very much. I think her naivete and not knowing anything about the world and the way that Daniel Panabaker is playing her, and I'll admit she does feel like a different person, Still, the way she's playing her, it's very annoying, and I could feel it becoming more annoying with every episode. The main plot of the episode is about Barry recruiting some rogues to help him steal a device that the new rogues want to use for what they now know is to build a cosmic treadmill. I will say that I did feel like the plot of the episode and the mystery of Red Death went much more smoothly than I would have expected and was fairly well paced. It never felt like things were being dragged out for the sake of filler, Barry manages to figure out they're building a cosmic treadmill without dragging it out, and later on he notices everything you could possibly piece together about the Red Death to already determine at least certain things about them, like he sees the bat symbol, feels the negative speed force, and then also Chester and Iris figure out the connection to Wayne Industries and that Ryan Wilder is missing. It just felt very refreshing for the characters to be as intelligent as they honestly should be all of the time, and for them to figure out what the audience already knows. They piece it all together over the course of a single episode, and it is very refreshing. Although the fact that Barry figures out they're building a cosmic treadmill and then is surprised that there's a new speedster, the only type of person who could use a cosmic treadmill, is pretty dumb. But it wasn't just the Red Death mystery related things that ran smoothly. I thought this was a genuinely decent and pretty fun heist episode. It does get a bit cliche with like the recruiting and the backstabbing, and you could just feel that Rick and Morty heist episode making fun of it. But it's a cliche because it works, it's a cliche because it makes for a very fun plot. I think this episode greatly benefited from Barry going off on his own without the rest of Team Flash because Team Flash does nothing but drag him down and here he's out on his own being the leader of a new team of honestly somehow more compelling characters and I enjoyed it way way more than the typical Team Flash episode. The dynamic was a lot of fun, Pied Piper like I said was an over the top asshole in episode 2 but here he had some compelling elements to him even though he still was very much an asshole. That's just his character. Hotspot was pretty terrible in the past, but here he's not that bad. And Goldface, who's never appeared in a good episode before, like every episode he appears in has always been bad. 
Here, he was pretty enjoyable. Again, the dynamic of all these rogues was a lot of fun in a fun heist episode that I did enjoy. But then there's Chill Blaine, who's not exactly a character I've liked in the last few seasons. I mean, he was a serial killer who was forgiven because, I guess, Frost liked him. And ever since Frost died, he can't utter a sentence that isn't about her and how he just wants to bring her back to life. It never made sense for Team Flash to trust him, and he never made much sense as a character. And to make him a series regular in the final season, it sucks. So believe me when I say it felt very satisfying and honestly it felt inevitable when he betrayed Barry because this is the first time in a while they've done something at all interesting with this villain. I have no doubt he'll betray Red Death in the end but I think it'd be much more interesting if he simply doesn't. Then there's Red Death herself who's kind of been proving my initial assumptions wrong at least for now. Red Death actually has a decently scary presence to her and the costume looks much better in movement and on the show than it did in the set photos. I can't really believe I'm saying this, but as of episode 3, I kind of like Red Death as a villain, and I think she has potential. Hell, even after she removed her mask, I still felt a menace radiating off of her, and just the fact that they changed things from the comics, plus the thread opened up about Ryan Wilder going missing, makes me very curious about the explanation of this character's existence in the next two episodes. Is she the real Ryan Wilder who was taken over by the Negative Speed Force? Is she from the future? Is she from the Armageddon? in timeline if she's from an alternate universe I guess we'll just have to wait and see I think that she's from the Armageddon timeline that seems the most likely I will even say that the Red Death removing her mask and uttering the words I'm vengeance was pretty ballsy and honestly I kind of like it. I did laugh a bit initially because of the clear reference to the Batman, which came out less than a year ago, but then also how much worse this show is compared to the quality of the Batman. But I think in a vacuum, it's actually not that bad of a moment. It comes off as a pretty cool thing for her to say. But also, I just like the fact that they referenced another DC movie. Like, they've referenced the rest of the DC universe and even Batman a lot. But to reference an actual DC movie, which I guess is kind of like the Elseworlds, it is probably in the same multiverse, it's kind of cool, I like it. So I've been pretty positive in this video, but honestly this is just really in comparison to the rest of The Flash's average quality for the last few seasons. I was mostly saying things were better than I expected, or they were better than the show typically is, not necessarily that they were great. This episode still had Chester and Allegra, which is entirely skippable, like there are multiple scenes in this episode that you could completely cut out and the episode would be the same. The plot was cliche, even if it was enjoyable, there are corny moments, moments of very bad writing, and very cheap looking shots, but just in general, I don't know, I enjoyed it, I thought it was a huge step up from episodes 1 and especially 2, and I liked everything to do with the Red Death in this episode. If I had to give it a score, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10, which doesn't sound great, but remember that the whole scoring system here means that a 5 is an average, so 7 is above average, which is also basically as good as we could possibly hope for an episode of The Flash at this point in its run.